Welcome, everybody. I am Olivia Fernandez Bernabe. I will be your moderator uh, tonight. This is a, a panel discussion organized by uh, CCG. CCG is an astronomical term that actually describes the alignment of three heavenly bodies, and that's the earth, the moon, and the sun. But here in our community, this is actually an alignment of optimal health, optimal wealth, and optimal self. And of course, we're also partnered with uh, Neutralite. We'll show you some videos later. But anyway, we're going to get started with a topic uh, tonight on mindset, which is so important. It's mind over matter. And this is particularly for weight loss tonight. But you know what? The principles of this kind of mindset that you develop can be applied to many areas of your life for you to be successful because the principles are the same actually for success. So welcome, welcome everyone. And uh, this uh, is being recorded. What we're going to do is I'm going to introduce you to our panelists and ask them a few questions. And uh, later on, we're going to pause for uh, a video or two. And after that, we're going to return. If you in the audience, in the Zoom audience, you have any questions at all, we're going to address those questions and answer those questions later on at the end. All in all, this event will be about 50 minutes, more or less. So... We know about weight loss, right? We've heard about it. And many people are successful. But the challenge is, you must have heard also of yo-yo weight loss. Meaning, you gain the weight, you lose the weight, you gain the weight back. You lose the weight, you gain the weight back. And um, as I've discussed before in the past, in, in other optimal health sessions, the your body going through this yo-yo dieting that actually is very detrimental to your health. There are serious consequences to optimal health or just your health in general. Because some people, they just want to lose weight for a, for a reason and it, they've changed their mind and they put on the, the weight again. So tonight's panel are people who have lost the weight, but have completely transformed their mindset, their thinking, so that their habits that have caused them to be successful in weight management is now their lifestyle. It's like forever. So let's introduce the panel tonight. I'm going to uh, make sure that their video is here, their pictures are here. And of course, uh, they're unmuted. So let's start with, I'm going to ask them their name, their background, uh, married, single, what do you do in your life? What's your profession? And tell me when you started our CCG 16-week weight loss program, what was your weight? And what did you achieve after 16 weeks? What happened to your weight? So let's start with Carol. Hello, good evening, everyone. I am Carol Lopez, and uh, I'm a retired corporate um, language trainer. And um, I started with uh, this, our weight loss program in CCG during the pandemic. Uh, during the pandemic, that was what, 2022? Was it? Oh, 2020? or 2021, sometime during the pandemic, okay? And I was then uh, 65 kilos, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm not really so obese, you know, like fat, but I was chubby, but uh, and I had hypertension mm. and I was, yeah, I was on uh, medication for life, supposed to be 
um, taking a tenolol small dosage since I was 44 years old. I'm now a happy, I have been a happy uh, senior citizen for nine years now. <laughs> so anyway, it stopped everything. I, I take no um, hypertension meds right now since I uh, started the weight loss um, How much program. weight did you lose? 65 from 65 wow. kilos. My target goal was only 55, but that yeah. was kilos. So about wow. 22 pounds because oh, we had wow. a 16, 16 week program. I was able to achieve that. And when I was able to achieve that, I even went down to 49. But wow. that was, yeah. But that was, uh, uh, that's a different story because it didn't look good anymore. You know, I was just so excited about my achievement that I overdid it. But now, you know, <laughs> upon consultation, I know what to do. Uh, and yeah, I should good. be happy with my 55 kilos. So that's what I'm maintaining right now. Okay, thank you. Arius, thank you. let's hear from you. Yeah, uh, I'm Aris Corpus. I have I'm an embedded software engineer. Um, I I do the optimal health program with my wife. So that was also sometime in pandemic. So before the program, my weight uh is around 170 pounds. So right now I'm in 150 pounds. 20 pounds. Yeah. So so 20 pounds. Then I keep that like plus or minus three from time to time, but I, you sh I, I never get back to my original weight before the optimal health program. So they, you've maintained your weight for years. Amazing. Yes. Yep. Okay. And then uh, Romina, hello, join us. Tell us about yourself. Hello, good evening. My name is Romina Rizari. My background is in nursing huh, and special education. My wake up call happened 2019 when this nurse realized my blood pressure is very high. Yeah, so it was 170 over 100. Um, even Olive did not think I had a weight problem. But when I yeah. checked my weight, I was 56 kilos and I'm only aspiring to be five feet tall. <laughs> so I'm a very short, petite woman, very heavy, five kilos. very heavy in the middle. So 2019, um, like Carol, I enjoyed the habits in a pandemic situation. I was locked in. The day was simpler. So like her, after 12 weeks, my weight went down, 42 kilos. Yeah? So mm -hmm. I started to look um, too thin for my family. <laughs> so I, I found my weight. Uh, Dr. Rico was actually telling me, you need to add more carbs. So I raised it to 45. Yeah? So now I'm around 45, 46 kilos. So okay. um, and my blood pressure, which was the motivation, is mm -hmm. already from 170 over 100. It's down to 110 over 80. I never had to take medicines. Okay. Yeah. So again, I'd like to just tell you what I learned. You don't, you don't lose weight just to lose weight. When the goal of losing weight is to get healthier. Mm -hmm. Because when you lose the weight, look at that. Your blood pressure goes down. Your maintenance disappear, maintenance meds. You're just healthier. Uh, that's an amazing story to Romina. Anyway, we're talking about mindset tonight. You're successful. You're you're you can share your story. Your stories are inspiring, the three of you. And I know it's not easy, but please define for me, if you will, what for you is the right. Describe the right mindset for successful weight loss. And yeah, describe it to me. What is that proper mindset uh, with the limited time that you have, Carol? Yes. Okay. First of all, uh, what is uh, mindset? And, and why is it crucial? Why is it crucial okay. for losing? Yeah. So mindset is uh, defined to be a habitual or characteristic mental attitude that determines how you will um, 
interpret and respond to situations. Of course, um, other words that can help you remember what mindset really is, is to um, remember the words mentality, outlook, or mental attitude. In this case, it is our mental attitude, developing a healthy uh, mental attitude towards weight, weight, our weight journey. And it is important. Why? Because if you keep working with a good mindset for weight loss, you will see results over time. Over time. I don't know when. It depends on the individual. And that kind of mindset is essential to making any lasting change. So, um, wow. That's... There you go. <laughs> In <that>. short. <laughs> yeah, Arius, what do you say? What, what, why is it imp what is the mindset you need and why is it crucial so uh for me um why, why it is very the, the, having the having a goal oriented mindset is really crucial especially uh that having a goal and having a clear purpose can really keep you motivated so to 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 really have that successful weight loss journey so i guess it's more it started with having a goal a goal oriented mindset Setting a goal. Setting a goal, okay. Yep. And uh, Romina? I agree with both of them. Uh, um, um, for me, since my background is from health, I also needed to embrace a growth mindset. I needed to be open to learn. Um, because there were many things Dr. Rico was telling me and telling our patients that were uh, um, counterculture very different from what I was trained to say and teach patients. So I needed to learn. No? And it, it helped that Dr. Rico was very um, generous, sharing videos, um, books, a lot of resources that um, helped me um, accept the new information on health. No? I, I mean, at the very least, I had to give up the things that I thought were very important. I was a fruit person. I had oatmeal every day. And those were the very first things um, that made me realize was keeping me with hypertension. So when I gave it up, um, my insulin resistance um, was addressed. Okay. So we're, we're beginning to understand their story. Where, they, where were they coming from? What mindset made a difference? Um, I, what about resiliency? How can one cultivate a positive and resilient mindset so that they stay motivated throughout their weight loss journey? Because it's not just for a day. It's not just for a month that you want to lose weight, weight but you want it to be your life. How do you stay motivated um, and, and cultivate that resiliency, uh, Carol? First, uh, your motivation should be clarified in the beginning. Why mm. are you doing this? Are you mm. doing this just to um, to look like this, to look like a model or something like that? No. In my case, my main motivation was to be healthy. That's very oh. general. But in particular, I only had one problem. Aside from a little, uh, you know, uh, I was kind of overweight the cardiologist told me for my height, weight, and age. But the main thing was hypertension. I was on medication for uh, quite some time since I was 44 years old, you know, because of stress and other things at work. And so um, that changed. That was my motivation. And I was Clear quite motivation. successful. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Clear so motivation. Have, you have to start with why. Yeah. When you begin this, you, you've got to have a serious why. Thank you for that. Uh, Aries, what can you say? Yeah, for me, it's visualizing success. No, So it, it, it's, it's really having that, like trying to visualize what would be the end, what would be the end goal of this and how, uh, and especially that I, I love running. So, uh, it, it keeps me, I, I, I set goals on 
the time I will finish a 10K run or a 15K run. So I try to visualize myself achieving those. So it really keeps me motivated and having a resilient mind in achieving my my weight loss goal. All right. That Visualization. Is uh, yeah, but um, I also have to um, emphasize that change is very uncomfortable for my personality. Yeah. Right? Uh, I'm, I'm plagued that way. Very stubborn. And I um I didn't want medicines. Um, I might have been like Carol, uh, fast forward the tape if if I really um did not change my habits. And I was very yeah, was better about, than I didn't uh, want the new choices no, that I have to make. But um, it helped that I was uh, what maybe you'd call it baptism by fire. Because I wasn't only the patient, I ended up coaching. So um, I, I worked with Dr. Rico on the same patients, and I had my own patients. And, and that kind of situation, which is a bit unique, no? made me more resilient and positive deliberately. No? Because I, I needed to learn the lesson fast enough that the next one I coach will be more positive because of my then very recent example. <laughs> so it might have helped that so I was you, yeah. guiding others to do the same. So you were teaching from your own experience and that's the best way to teach. It's something you've actually done, not yeah. theory. Okay. Now we know that there are so many stumbling blocks along the way as people set this goal to lose weight and get healthier. What do you think, you know, specific or are some of the common mental barriers people face when trying to lose weight? What's blocking them? Not only to lose weight, but to keep the weight off. Carol. Oh, I have several in mind and um, uh, regarding the barriers or the mental barriers, actually, you know. One is the discomfort of occasionally feeling hungry. Yeah, when you're hungry, you're, is it time to eat, really? You know, that's the question you ask. And then the discomfort of exercising, because I'm not very athletic like uh, Eris. <laughs> so anyway, the discomfort of exercising instead of st stress eating. Yeah, but I, I was able to overcome that, you know. Um, and then, um, what do you call this? Resisting, resisting the invitations uh, of other people of sure. ultra palatable food, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and um, some, some people, in my observation, are easily discouraged that's my observation, not necessarily mine, but I noticed, you know, that they are discouraged by natural weight fluctuations. Sometimes, mm -hmm. oh, they're able to achieve this and they're able to achieve that. Oh, exactly. well, I'm back to my old day. Oh, it's so difficult. Yeah, fluctuations. So, okay. And yeah. Oh, those ahead. can yeah. be barriers. Okay. That's about it for now. <laughs> Maybe the others can add on. Very, very practical. Yeah, very real reasons. Uh, Ika, uh, you, Aris, what do you think are the common barriers? Why people don't succeed? Yeah, um, for I, I just remember this. Like, uh, one thing that really is comparison with others is if you if you compare your progress with others, and it it really discourages you. So it's just stay the course, and with that. Having having the support group, like because lack of support is also one of the main thing. Cause this is act actually, I uh, because uh, we we have a successful optimal health program after we really involve ourselves with a support group. So the lack right. of support as well is really is really one of those barriers in achieving that that right mindset. When you're doing it alone by your lonesome yeah. self. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And Romina? I agree with both of them. No? During the pandemic, maybe we were still learning, at least for my sake, no? how to fast. So I also felt hunger and I wasn't sure. Am I just hungry or thirsty? No? You went through that. 
the thing is, I started very early in the pandemic, 2019. Mm -hmm. And then I got used to the habits. And I think my new mental barrier is now socializing. Mm -hmm. uh, now that the we're not locked in, no? yeah. and, and the invitations are coming, many reasons to meet people. I, I couldn't um, schedule them. Like I only meet one person for a social meal a day. Sometimes it becomes three um, social meetings in a day. So that's a, a barrier. It's actually teaching me empathy because some of my patients now are learning the habits in this setting, which is more normal. No, they're also um, past pandemic. They're also socializing. We talk about Christmas. We talk about at buffets and weddings, this and that, even funerals, <laughs> or when I counsel a priest, you know, what happens to dawn masses <laughs> when you can't, you have to break your fast because your host is feeding breakfast. So anything, those things are, are the barriers. It, it's making me um, develop more empathy and it cultivates compassion no? also for myself because um, right. it's a, real thing right it's a decision we make every day every meal every invitation okay. all right so tell me more specifically what are some of the eff effective strategies that you use to cultivate this really uh strong mindset well somebody talked about uh, i think it was Aries. you talked about visualization or goal setting would you like to uh, explain or, or or what more uh can you say, Carol? What effective oh. strategies do you use? First of all, regarding goals, it is important to set your fitness goals that are practical or reachable. Because mm -hmm. weight loss is not magic. You know, you don't expect um enormous results right away. It depends on a lot of factors. So it's best to keep uh, realistic goals. That's mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. And then um, choices, food choices, for example, you know, uh, achievable goal. For example, um, if you are a soda type of uh, a soda loving personal, a person, sorry, you know, maybe you can replace it with tea, good coffee and water, something like that. So food choices. Water. And then um, what, what do you call this? Um, uh, there are other things like uh, reward yourself every time you achieve a goal. <laughs> reward yourself. That's not, uh, that's not easy to, that's not difficult to do. Okay, and there's one specific thing, you know, I learned. Stop eating before you're too full. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes it's hard, especially when you, you appreciate and you're having fun with a certain kind of food, you know, placed before you. Yeah, but that's where discipline comes in. Discipline yeah. comes in. And um, that's... Another important thing, improve your self-discipline, therefore. Remove temptations away from you if you can, as much as you can. And, uh, you know, don't rush uh, your progress. You know, tomorrow I'm going to lose five kilos. The next day, another five kilos. Yeah. No, that's not realistic. And don't yeah. rush because haste makes waste, so they say. And, and then journaling, you know, get a weight loss journey. It's good to track down. Take it down, track it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Very That's, good. Yeah. yeah. Actually, everything you said, if people can make this a habit, then they're in for a really lifelong, fantastic, uh, healthy journey, not just for weight loss, but for health. What about you, uh, Arius? Any specific strategies that you use? So, yeah. So, what I really do, especially with exercise, is cre I really create a routine. Like, I do... Like, like, it creates a habit. Then, 
And for those routine, I find, like for example, for exercise, I find enjoyable activities. So, like I love to run. So, so I I, I insert <laughs> those on on those. Yeah, on on my on my exercise. So that's one of the key strategy that I really do. Then monitor and reflect. <laughs> so I monitor my progress, then reflect and try to analyze what went wrong along the way, <laughs> or you know. So those 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 strategy really helps me. Yeah, I agree with him because I am coaching students, my teenagers who are well, they have special needs, and it is very important that the habits that you agree on are very easy to do, so that it's also easy for the child to count. I ended up doing it myself. And since I am trying to relearn things that are new, I started to buy the books like of Jason Fung, uh, the people who um, are in the videos that Dr. Rico was sharing to me. I needed to pick their brains some more. So it became a daily thing again. I, I was listening to audios. I was reading the books on health and it fed my brain and it kept health in my mind the whole day oh good yeah these are good tips actually reading the book books about it and uh, okay here's another question we know that the enemy of of trying to get healthier and and just lose weight is to handle this thing it's called cravings cravings we just lose control when we see it we have that temptation well uh some of us are very well disciplined we've been around the health environment for so long but some people are just starting their journey so how do you handle how did you handle these cravings and maintain that discipline carol any particular techniques well i've um mentioned earlier that I try to avoid as much as possible. You no, know? try to avoid distractions. Oh, okay. When you begin to develop your self discipline, it's part. It's self discipline all along. It's developing discipline. Yeah, self discipline, and uh, uh, you know, try to make it harder to engage in the activity you're trying to avoid. How do you, you make know? it? Hard? You mentioned about the restaurant. Where what restaurant? Oh yeah, both. Uh, like for example, you know, there I have such a thing as a treat day instead of a cheat day, because for me a cheat day, okay, uh, on weekends I can I can eat whatever I want. No, not for me, because for me cheat day is something um, preconceived then that's detrimental to my uh, okay. progress, right? So okay. I call it a, a treat day because sometimes you cannot avoid events where you are invited and you want to be proper. You don't want to hurt the other person and things like that. And sometimes when they invite you to an event or, and uh, those uh, presented to you are not within the table <laughs> suggested for your weight weight loss journey. So what do you do? Mm, you know, take a little so as not to offend and be um, gracious to your, to your uh, host and not well, create um, a scene there. Oh, I can't do that, you know, because I'm on oh intermittent diet. fasting or something like that. No, no, no. It's too no, radical. No. It's too. Yeah. So you handle the cravings by, you know, trying a little. Eating a little. Yeah. You, 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 you're happy with that. You just don't. Uh, I don't default. Yeah. That's part of the discipline you're trying to, you know, okay. um, uh, trying to instill. What about yeah. you, Agnes? How do you handle the craving? <laughs> Deadly so, cravings. Yeah. So, um. I, I'm so blessed because we, we, when we started the program, I started it, I, I, we do, I did the, I did the program with my wife. So we went, we went with my wife, Suzette. And 
we help each other remind ourselves when we have cravings. So for example, uh, I, I said, I want to eat this. And Suzette will remind me na, you're just thirsty, just drink water. So, you know, we're, <laughs> we're helping each other. So anyway, actually, it's true. That's the, I, I learned that from, from Doc Rico as well, that just, just plant it in your head that you're just thirsty. So you just need water. You don't need food. <laughs> Plant it in your head. Yeah, just yeah, yep. because if you drink a lot of water, you're gonna be full, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and hydrated, which is good. Yeah. What about you, Romina? Well, How do you have cravings? Uh, the is very the reason why I got so small is all the triggers are not at home. Now I stopped buying rice. I stopped buying bread. I stopped buying fruit. I had to abstain. Now, um, and maybe that's something that some of you um, will need to do because you need to get to know the body that's healthy when it finally doesn't have insulin resistance, when there's no more inflammation. Now, so um, when it's absent, now, majority of the time you're home, now, even if you're hit by cravings, you simply cannot have that. No, whatever it is that you're missing because it's not available. At least it simplifies the choice. Okay? And, and uh, don't worry, yeah. when you achieved some health goals, like when my blood pressure was quite normal already and it was uh, stable at that, then like Carol also, when I socialize, no? so like I don't count birthday carbohydrates. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, so sometimes there are there are certain situations. Maybe I will not accept dinner invitations, but I do brunches. Now, so when I'm outside, um, I ended up paying for expensive carbohydrates. <laughs> <laughs> so at least it limits the amount of carbohydrates I'm going to Like eat. what? Expensive carbohydrates? Like, I don't know. It's, it's just like I'm not buying bread that's cheap. I want to buy it. Uh, um, fancy uh, in a way that um, and of course not just the bread being expensive but it's related to socializing with a friend so it's also a milestone in terms of uh, um, you know reconnecting because this is after the pandemic we missed each other we're seeing each other again where's like that so I pay for my cards dearly <laughs> there has to be a milestone <laughs> attached to it <laughs> All right. Very good ideas. Now we're going to touch on the subject of accountability and being part of a support group and having a coach. You see, that's uh, different here in our CCG program. We have a coach assigned to you, just like if you had a gym coach. You can imagine that you're going to have better muscles, you know, put on the muscles faster with a coach, do the right exercises compared to not having a coach. Here, these people, the three of them had coaches to guide them. So, and they were in the right environment. So tell me about your support group why coaches are important and this particularly what oh, i'm sorry this particular accountability our weekly accountability meeting uh so let's start again with carol oh yes accountability me uh, accountability meetings were there for us every week uh when ariel ariel was still alive and uh, Aris and I were part of the group, right? And um, it helps you monitor, you know? They, they, they don't tell you, you are not told, oh, you're a failure, no, no, nothing of that sort. It's just, um, it's just uh, keeping track, keeping track of uh, what you have achieved or what you have not achieved so that uh, you can do better next time you know you're not chastised or anything of that sort you're not put in a spot it's just sharing sharing your journey it's very important because people are you have the same goals of you have certain goals weight loss 
goals. The journey is similar in different circumstances, but similar. And it's important because it can be um, a game changer, really. And having a coach can be a game changer that empowers you to uh, to uh, achieve your goals. Right. right. So, uh, Aries. Yeah, um, so... Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that we really admire with, with having a support group or the WAM is first is emotional support. So, you know, you know, in on a weight loss journey, it really have a lot of emotions, like a lot of emotions involved. You're being discouraged, you're you're discouraged. But when during that that accountability meeting, when some when your fellow like uh trying to lose weight uh share their their struggles and how they overcome it so you you you're you're being encouraged so you're being inspired to really continue the journey and the next one is the practical support so yeah. in that community you learn uh practical healthy habits like any tips that especially if somebody is struggling with this type of dessert so how could they overcome it then you know on those areas of reducing temptation so those are really my key points in having a community is having the emotional support and having the practical support okay thank you and it's different when you're in the environment you are the average of the five people you deal with daily so yeah. when you're influenced by people around you and they're all trying to be lean and fit and healthy i mean it's you're you're infected uh there's like osmosis right okay romina what can you say i was coaching uh, and observing another coach who was dr rico with similar patients um and i noticed that if we develop enough rapport not uh, the honesty in the communication and the regularity of it can help reset the thinking. Okay, so when when we're working with people who check in frequently, and that's sometimes every day, na, and they're very honest, na, um, it's very easy to help them um, bounce back na, or become resilient, especially with the habits. And it also teaches me how to tweak the habit because if you're really struggling with that i'm also on solution mode so it, it's nice um when you become a coach because you learn to be creative now when you're finally teaching a habit that you learn to do yourself you learn from the student and then you become a more creative mentor so it was like that for me all right so we've come to uh it's there's so many areas that we can really cover the this mindset is a really really big uh subject but i have one more question and then we're going to uh, show a couple of videos and then we're going to ask the audience for if they have questions we're going to answer their questions whoever can and and want wants to answer those particular questions so now we're going to close with, again, focusing on long-term, sustainable habits, attitudes, mindset. What, not just for, you know, some people want to lose weight because they're going to a party. Other people, or to a wedding. Other people want to lose weight because they're trying to attract a spouse. <laughs> but actually... When they get married, they forget. So what mindset shifts are necessary to maintain this lasting change, this mindset effectively? Uh, Carol, what can you say? Maybe because I can. You've maintained it for years already. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. These people did not bounce, go back to their old selves. So Carol, yeah. Yeah, I. if you allow me, I would like to stress or summarize the points or the mind shift, uh, mindset shifts that can help you uh, sustain your, 
your uh, health journey, your weight loss journey, first, you, you need to clarify your motivation to lose weight. I think that's number one, goal setting. And then be kind to yourself, practice self-compassion along the weight loss journey. And then take time to eat mindfully. Enjoy. Enjoy the food rather than, oh, I don't like this. Like, you know, be positive about what you can eat. Okay. And then, of course, the, the fourth, it goes back to uh, the goals. You know, set realistic goals. You, you just can't say, uh, you know, oh, I want to lose 50 kilos in three weeks. I mean, it's impossible, almost impossible. Set realistic goals and don't forget to take baby steps. No drastic steps wow. will take you to, to a long-term uh, result. Yes. Wow. And then, you know, that growth mindset about weight loss setbacks, because there will be setbacks along the way. Yeah. So... Develop be ready for the setbacks. Yes, be, be ready, ready for that. Yeah. It's normal. Normal. And um, focus on the long-term habits that you have learned. You know, it's not a magic number. Baby steps and everything would summarize the whole journey. Okay. Thank you. Words of You're wisdom, welcome. Arius. So me is maintain a maintain a positive support system so be be always be within the like join join the join a community like ccg like be yeah. because it really help you uh in continually engage and have access to resources or information that's really supporting you uh with your weight loss journey then and another key thing is health overweight so it's always the overall health that really matters. So that's maintain that like continuous improvement, like improving not only the focusing as well on the non-scale victories. So th th those type of mindset shift. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. And Romina? They said everything already. But maybe um, personally, how do I keep the weight healthy? No, for five years now, I still track my habits. So Ooh, find auditorium. a system that allows you to easily track your habits. Every day I count how long I fasted. Every day I count the meals I've had. I look at my steps. I count my waist. I still do that because it's directly um, related to my blood pressure. I even count my sleep. So maybe that's one of the reasons why I can encourage another person to develop the health habits because I haven't stopped counting. Wow. Wow. How diligent. Discipline. <laughs> yeah. Discipline. yeah. <laughs> well, um, I have, I, I, I lost, I'm not an amazing story, but I did lose 10 pounds, which was my goal. And I kept it. So I was able to get my weight back down to when I was in high school. So I was never really wow. overweight. I was never really overweight, but I wanted, I challenged myself to lose five pounds and I couldn't lose five pounds. And I didn't understand why I couldn't lose five pounds until I understood the program of the CCG Optimal Wealth. I was trying, oh, optimal health. I was trying to reduce my meals, I was exercising, but it nothing worked. Five pounds until I learned about uh, low carb, intermittent fasting, uh, and all the other habits that we teach in the CCG sixteen week. You know, we're going. We're not gonna uh, end this yet. We still have a, a a question or two or three, but we're going to now uh, take a little uh, break and watch. A couple of videos from our corporate partner, Neutralite. Neutralite is the largest and oldest vitamin food supplement 
in the world. It's the only company that grows and harvests certi from their certified organic farms and concentrate those plants. They have a fantastic lineup of supplements that can help you with your weight loss journey. So if we're ready with the, the video, Ryan. Every morning, there's a traffic jam in our kitchen, and the whole family is after one thing, protein powder. Everybody gets what they need just by changing the amount used. One scoop to support energy and cellular health to help me keep up with my family. Two scoops to give my son the strength and stamina to score the winning goal. Half a scoop for my daughter so she can power through science class. A scoop and a half to help my dad maintain his muscle function for his yoga class. And my husband? Well, if he got up a little earlier, there might still be a scoop left for him to support his energy and heart health. It's a good thing Nutrilite All Plant Protein now comes in a value size. I just hope my husband doesn't think this means he can sleep in longer. Okay, so these are just quick, exciting videos. Uh, I also track my protein. That's so important because at my age, you know, you're losing muscle mass. Anyway, so there is a question if, um, okay, here's a question. If you could, I'll give you a second or just a few seconds to think. It's, 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 a, it's a question that's going to surprise you. If you could advise your past self one thing, what would it be? One thing you would advise your me past when you were overweight. Yeah, Aries, go. I'll, I'll go first. Eat low carb. Uh, <laughs> That's the one thing. That's the one thing. Copy the answer. <laughs> Another yeah, thing. Because, yeah, <laughs> be, because that's really yeah, one of the fine. key things that we I, I really noticed with the past, uh, you know, program or attempt of losing weight. The, the the low carb diet was really very critical so that's why that's the number one thing i would advise myself low carb okay what about you carol low sugar yeah carbs also become sugar yeah. yes low carb low sugar the best all right <laughs> including all the cakes and the sodas <laughs> anyway and uh, romina with your answer because it was the final piece of the puzzle for me that you know um fixed the blood pressure problem but if i may add another answer learn to fast mm -hmm. i now that i have developed the skill of fasting i like my body when i am in a fasting state i even like my mind i'm very creative i can write well i remember fast and i'm sharp so okay, get to know your body when you're fasting. Well, again, there are beginners here, but okay, nice. How many hours do you fast a day, Romina? Uh, usually 18 to 20. Okay, I know there are beginners. Don't be shocked. <laughs> you Sorry. don't start with that. You start with a very, well, very small... Start 12. Yeah, you eat 12 hours. You don't eat anything for 12 hours. It's amazing. <laughs> I agree with the three of them. Low carb fasting, knee exercise, but again, uh, 
I have a comment here. No wonder Jesus fasted a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so fit. I agree. Now, are there any but, other questions? Okay, they're saying very inspiring health journey. Yeah, you really, we're going to share this uh, little panel discussion to our friends who need to hear your, your advice. And Yugesh said, thanks for responding to my question. And uh, to be my to be one with mind and spiritual self. That's the advice of Cherise Lopez, another person who transformed her life through the CCG 16-week program. So friends, we've come to the end of the evening, but uh, we're going to invite you to say hello to your friends who invited you and, and meet up in a breakout room which will last just a few more minutes just to say hi, give give some feedback. Um, you were supposed to have a number at, before your name. So our host, Ryan, can actually put you in the right room. So if you don't know that number, go back and message your, your friend here now. And what number should I put so that you can get together in your breakout room? And I'll, I'll see you. See you then in the breakout room. God bless everybody. God bless your weight loss and health journey. Thank you again so much, our panelists, Aris, Romina, and Carol. Thank, Thank you. Good night, everyone. God bless.